Good evening. Hello there. <laughs> Welcome. We won't be before you long, but we just wanted to make sure that we got something in to you. It's been a long weekend, and uh, we've had some safe travels to and from North Carolina. We've talked to some of y'all, and uh, in particular, Jerome and Sheree. Glad to hear y'all doing real well, so well that they were quite busy. Uh, we had a fabulous time at dinner in Raleigh, so uh, we're going to just open up in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to share with others and just use your word uh, to impart knowledge and understanding, Father God. Father, we pray uh, that you bless each and every family represented that may watch this video and that you continue to be in the middle of their marriage and allow them to put you at the head of their life, Father God, so that they can follow your path and your plan for their life, Lord. Allow your will to be done in their life. Bless them as individuals. Bless them as a couple. Bless their children. Bless their home, Father God. And Father, allow this time to be edifying to them, Lord. Forgive us of our sins and continue to protect us and guide us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You think so, people push the 10-second button when you start praying? Uh, no, because oh. they know that I'm, you know, getting better with, <laughs> you know, brevity. She always got jokes, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, tonight we're going to talk a little bit about submission. You know, Tasha's going to be leading the way. And then we're going to get into uh, a discussion about our our recent uh, workout adventure. Oh, I thought we were going to talk about that first. <laughs> we can do that. Okay. We'll open up on a lighter note then. <laughs> we joined E2M Fitness on Facebook. Um, eager to motivate E2M. Oh, is that what it means? Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know And that. Uh, you pay $40 a week for eight weeks. And once you finish the eight weeks, you are a part of the group in perpetuity and you can join what word is uh, that? perpetuity. Is perpetuity. That yeah, well, I guess so. And uh, you can follow the eight week program. We, we have a weekly workout and a weekly meal plan that we follow. And we uh, uh, have implemented intermittent fasting. We only eat within an eight hour window every day. And the other 16 hours we're fasting and we can only have two to three meals. Specific meals? Yep. A protein, uh, a vegetable, and a healthy, healthy fat. fat. And some weeks you have fruit as well. And you get those two to three uh, in, in that eight hour window. So once you start eating, you just, you know, do the math. And your last meal should be by the, the end of that eight hour period. Um, How's that I, going for you, Freddie? It's going great. <laughs> it's going great as long as I don't miss any meals or if I don't take a long time, you know, <laughs> between meals, you know. Um, I don't necessarily call it communication challenges, but hunger brings out a different part of you. You know, we've done, Tasha and I have done really well in the way we communicate, not raising our voice, not, you know, letting anger get in the way of our communicating. And, you know, there were a couple of moments, you know, I got a little testy, you know, um, <laughs> regarding some vegetables, you know, that, you know, Tasha refused to share with me. You know, I was really upset about that. And, Let's clarify. And, well, let me finish. <laughs> you have your turn. And then, you know, uh, I think the entire family was a little part of the Hunger Games after we went to church for the first time Sunday last Sunday and we went to Silver Diner for I guess learner or uh, brunch more so brunch and you know we were all playing we were playing Uno as we were waiting on our food but it was approaching noon and we hadn't eaten a darn thing so you know I think uh, you know it was just getting a little testy but he's a little uh, hangry you know, it's all good. You yes. know, Jess, you know, sent me a little <laughs> sign, and, you know, something to the effect of, forgive me what I said to you when I was hungry or something like Angry. that. Angry. Angry or whatever. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it was a good week. And uh, we are in the second, and we we're like two and a half weeks into our program. And um, this is the start officially of week three, but we didn't start to Thursday of the first week. So, we're trailing a little bit behind, uh, but we've both seen some results already. I dropped about 10 pounds in the first week. Tasha dropped about five, six pounds. And uh, we are maintaining. 
and it is getting us into the gym. You know how we go walking together? So now, y'all, we are doing cardio together in the gym. We are doing circuit training together in the gym, y'all. We, we are doing workouts together like we've never done before. And uh, Tasha got a waist trainer, and I got my waist trainer vest today. It's a it's a cross between a sauna suit and a waist trainer, and uh, just wanted to share that with you. I think Tasha probably has some humorous points. You know, she thinks she's a comedian. She's always got some humor she wants to share as it relates to our workouts, but. We are taking weekly photos. Uh, we are anticipating that uh, by week eight, we will see a significant difference in our bodies as well as our weight. I hope so. Yeah, we better. Because <laughs> we are following the program. Yes, we and we are. are trusting the process. We are following the program. You yeah, know, I, mean, I think Freddie summed it up. He was, um, you know, I don't even know if it was, was it day one or day two? <laughs> it was early in the pro program. <laughs> You know, I try to be diligent about preparing um, food for us to eat and making sure that I'm following what's on the, the sheet as far as what we can have and the quantity. And, you know, Freddie, it must have been day two because um, I had made enough for us to eat that meal um, a couple times and then I made something else so uh, we could mix it up. And Freddie had eaten early and set some aside for me. And I uh, took a little longer to eat. So by the time I was eating my first meal, he was on his second meal. And I was warming up the food that he had um, set aside for me. And as I was warming up the food that he set aside for me is that he wanted me to give him my food. And I was like, hold up, bruh. I can't give you my food because I'm starving. And he was like, you're not going to share with me? I said, you mean share the food that you portioned for me to have? And so now you want to take half of what I'm supposed to have? No, sir, I'm not doing that. And I was like, but I have provided you with some alternatives. All you have to do is cook it. <laughs> so it was a little, um, you know, it was a, it was, it was a little um, uh, tension in the house. Um, and it has been a joke about daddy being a little hangry. Uh, Freddie had to step away for a second because we recently got some news that another one of our dear friends from college um, has passed away unexpectedly. And, um, you know, so our phone is blowing up just a little bit. So um, bear with us as he steps back into um, the camera. Um, we are going to um, focus on, you know, we're gonna try to keep this as short as possible. Um, because we know we're getting this out to you a little late, but our intent is to first discuss, discuss the scripture with you guys and then have you come back and look at the video. Um, and so what we want to focus on is, Freddie, pull out the scriptures. Um, a but, few, you know, you just said that, but uh -huh. they're not going to know that. Cause, it's all right because we're going to send it in a text. <laughs> we already discussed that, though. We're going to send it in a text. So yeah. you should be... Um, have already discussed the scripture and we would have already had the Tuesday conversation. Um, and then, you know, we hope that you go back and listen to the video. Yeah, she was talking about, you know, uh, my friend, uh, our friend, my frat, uh, James, we found out the day he passed away. And um, it's just, it's shocking. And uh, it was a little rough. I've called some guys that couldn't even talk on the phone and um, the word is getting around the VCU community and the people that were all in the school together at the same time. And uh, it's a little challenging, y'all. I, I, I've got myself together and um, so we're going to talk about submission and I'm going to um, read on behalf of the, uh, the visually challenged and uh, we're going to let me know you may just lead in and let me know when you're ready for me to get into it. No, go ahead. Yeah, I'm going to start. All right. So we're reading from Matthew 5. This is New King or NIV. Which one you want to read? Um, I guess you can read New King, whatever's up there. New King James. New King James. Um, we're going to be reading from New King James. Um, Ephesians 5, starting at verse 21. Submitting to one another 
in the fear of God. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she would be holy and without blemish. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it just as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. So that is uh, Ephesians 5, 21 through 33. Yes. I know that was a, um, a little long, but, you know, we do devotion every night. And this was um, something that kind of stood out as far as um, kind of a, around the topic of the conversation that we've been having lately. I know at least on the women's calls about like, how are we talking to each other? What are we saying? And, you know, we know on the last calls, um, we talked about words matter. Like when you say something, something matters. And even though you say stuff and you have a, an intention, uh, how it's received, you can't always, um, you can't always dictate how someone's going to receive what you say. And so a lot of times this particular scripture, especially uh, verse 21, well, actually verse 23, where it says, wives, submit to your husbands. I think it says that, um, reader, what does it say? Wives, what does it say? Mm, 22. 22. Read that again. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. Right. But see, what people like to do is they like to start on 22 instead of starting on 21. And 21 says what, Freddie? 21 says submitting to one another in the fear of God. Right. And so what happens is a lot of times, because I know even when we first got married, you know, oh, you're going to submit, you're going to obey. Because, you know, another translation of submit is obey. If you look at the source, it's Excuse. like submit or obey. But it also means to fall under authority of, right? Um, but there is a preface under falling authority. Just as um, Christ, just as the husband submits to the Lord or submits to the church. So in order for a wife to submit to the husband, the husband needs to be submitted unto God first. And so a lot of times people try to take that out of context, where, <clears throat> what submission means. And so what submission means is that you're falling under the authority of like, so as his, Freddie's wife, I'm under his covering right that he's he's covering me he's covering me um as as far as the family is concerned about the protector he's the priest of the household but he can only be my covering if he submitted unto the lord right mm -hmm. and so that's what it means to submit to one to another right because he is my covering but i am his helpmate and helpmate means that in the process, he's not doing it by himself, right? Just like God created Adam first and he took the, you know, the ribs yes. from Adam and he created Eve, Eve to be her, his equal. They put side, side by from side, the side, right? From the side. From the side, not from the tail, not right. from the back, from the side. So that and, she could walk alongside Adam. Right. So we're supposed to be doing this together. And 
just because Freddie is the priest of the household does not mean he has all the answers or that he is the final authority or is in charge. That's not what that means. And I think what's key about being the priest of the household, you got to make sure that you have submitted to God because if you're not submitted to God and doing what God has told you to do, then there's going to be a challenge. Your wife is not necessarily going to submit to somebody that is not submitting to God. Right, right. Um, and but we all have to walk in the light that we should for our relationship with Christ. So even when one spouse isn't obedient, that doesn't mean that the other one isn't. Um, and it goes both ways. Ideally, both spouses should be obedient to what God is calling them to do. Right, so that you should be on one accord, right? And so when we are in discord, like when stuff is all hell in a handbasket or there's like, oh, we were in the honeymoon period for this amount of period, but then it fell off. That's because we're not on one accord. That's because somebody is not being obedient to what God is telling them. And God could speak to me just like he could speak to Freddie. Like if God is saying to me, we need to do X, Y, and Z, and then I say, you know, Freddie, this is what I feel like the Lord is t telling us to do. You know, being submitted to one another means that Freddie's going to be open to what I'm telling him. But if you think that God has to tell Freddie first and then Freddie is the one, Freddie's the end all, the be all, then it's not going to work. It's not because you can't say that God doesn't use and talk to each person because that's why he sent Jesus so that we can all have an individual relationship with him through the Holy Spirit. And so the Holy Spirit may tell me some things that he's not telling Freddie because Freddie may not be in the right space. It may not be for Freddie or um, it, he just wants to use me. And you have to remember that um, being submitted to one another means being open and listening to your spouse. And just to kind of give you a biblical reference of that, in addition to the scripture, you have um, Samson's mama, right? And I can't even, we'll, I'll give it to you in a reference, right? But the angel of the Lord came to her, right? And said to her, because she's, you know, she was a barren woman and, um, you know, she hadn't had children and, um, she was praying and um, the prophet, one of the prophets, I'm not going to say the name because I'm going to mess it up. And she was, um, you know, Samson's mama was praying and, you know, the, the angel of the Lord visited her and he said, you're going to have a baby. And she runs and she tells her husband. And of course, the husband, and, you know, he was like, why he didn't come to me and not tell you? She's like, I don't know, but this is the angel of the Lord. So she, you know, go back and, you know, he was like, tell him to come again and then he came again but he didn't go to the husband he came to the wife again and she was like hold up my husband didn't believe me i'm gonna have to go run back and tell him and so he brings them back and they tell him all about um that she's gonna have a baby and he needs to be raised in a certain way and it was samson and you know he could never cut his hair and god used the wife the god spoke to the wife to um you know to communicate a message for both of them right and so sometimes we as a couple have to yield to one spouse or another. Just because God is not telling me doesn't mean that God didn't tell Freddie. Right. And I would say this, just like any good leaders, good leaders listen. Any good head of a household listens, especially to their spouse. Mm -hmm. um, in order to be a great leader, you need to be a great listener. Right. And you need to be open to hear uh, what your spouse is sharing with you. And um, that goes both ways, whether you're the head or not. I mean, um, I think we have to learn how to listen well. Um, the very last verse talks about the wife respecting the husband. And it's hard to respect a husband if he's not being submissive to God. And I think that's something that we have to remember. It's also hard to... Um, you know, be submitted to one another if you're not first submitting to Christ. Right. So yes. you've got to submit to Christ first. Right. You do have to submit to Christ first. And uh, <clears throat> Freddie brought up the, um, the last line where it says, you know, husbands, love your wives. Right. And love your wives like you love yourself because no man hates himself. And yeah. so I think a lot of times 
even what we've just been discussing over the last couple of weeks is that some of the wives don't feel the love, right? They don't feel the love in the way that the husband speaks to the wife, right? And it doesn't feel like love because um, some of husbands or not, we're not even going to say husbands because it may be a, a wife that is talking to you crazy or saying something th mean or saying something hurtful or, you know, just not loving them, right? And them not feeling love. Like, like we, we don't want to operate in the flesh, but what comes out of your mouth translates into the emotions that we have. And so when you say things to your spouse and those things are hurtful, you don't feel the love. Like it's, it's about what you know, cause you've heard what they said and you know what they said. And so what you're doing is you're computing, you're trying to comprehend what they say, but then based on what they say, you then have an emotion. And that emotion dictates whether or not you feel love. And what they say determines how you feel. And so when you say something to your spouse and it's hurtful and you don't come back and clarify or apologize or try to, um, you know, make amends with them about what has taken place, then your spouse may not feel loved. And when you don't feel loved by your spouse or your husband, in this case, just taking the, the scripture, is that it's hard to respect someone that you don't love, right? It's hard. It's hard to say that you love someone when this person has hurt you because you don't feel loved. Why would I love and respect someone who's intentionally hurting me. And so we have to be mindful with how we take these, you know, scriptures, how we apply them to our lives and make sure that we take it in totality. Because if I'm submitting, if we're submitting to one another, right, then I want to keep his best interest at heart. And then he wants to keep my best interest at heart. But if he's not submitting to God, he, God is telling him to submit. He's not, he don't give a damn about my best interests, right? Because he's only loving himself. He's not loving me like he loves, he loves himself. himself. He's only loving himself for his own selfish agenda. And so we have to be mindful and we have to be careful about some of the things that we say and do to our spouse thinking that, oh, they'll be all right or they'll be here because you want to always be loving because that is the greatest command like all the other stuff in the bible god just tells us to love how are we supposed to love we're supposed to love like he loves us what? and love he gives god us a, and love your neighbor yeah and he gives us a guideline love and he tells you what love is mm -hmm. and he tells you in first corinthians 13, 13, 13, 13, 1 13 1 through 13 if you're not those things right if you're not the checklist then you need to evaluate how you can love your spouse better just by following that guideline. Let, let me say this for a second. I, I, I want to throw out a little disclaimer. Um, the ladies get together every other Thursday and fellas, they seem to, you know, dig a little deeper. Um, I need fellas to get on the calls every other Sundays. And if Sundays are not going to work for you, let me know a day that does. And wives, I need you to make sure that you touch base with your husband about getting on the calls on Sundays. Because uh, this past Sunday, I know it's a holiday weekend, uh, but I don't use that as an excuse. I only had one husband jump on the call. And I know that, um, you know, the ladies, y'all like to go in and talk about some pretty deep topics. And How would you know their friend? Well, I know that because I'm very close to the facilitator. <laughs> well, you because you um, was maybe in the room. And I, I was in the you room. You were eavesdropping. I was in the room in Miami. I was in the room. I was at eavesdropping. I'm in my house. I'm going to where I need to go to do what I need to do. And y'all know that I'm not trying to be up in y'all call. But what I'm saying is, I know that y'all get into some very heavy topics. The fellas, we tend to keep it a little light. And I'd love to get into some of the heavy topics. But first, I need all the fellas to get on the call. Uh, at least a critical mass of the fellows to get on the call. Yes. Uh, and, and for the most part, people, I, everybody's been on a call at least one time, uh, but I, I need to have a, a, a critical mass. And um, ladies, I would appreciate it if you nudge your husbands on the every other, you know, the Sunday following your call on Thursday nights, we do a call at three o'clock PM. And um, it's not too much to nudge your husbands. I always send them a reminder. And, um, but I just want to make sure that we're working on our marriages, that we're checking in, 
and that, you know, people are good. I want to hear it. I want to talk about it and get into some things that can be helpful. Uh, it's not always a, a topic on marriage, but at least we are sharpening each other. As the word says, iron sharpens iron. And I believe we all need this from time to time. And every other week, I don't think it's too much to ask. And um, you don't have to be there mo no more than an hour. Mm -hmm. uh, if you really care about your marriage, I think you should carve out an hour mm -hmm. to talk with other men about marriage and just have that conversation. So yeah, and I think, that's my soapbox. Yes, it's okay. Um, and he was eavesdropping just a little bit. He'd be like, I was an eavesdropper. He's like, y'all be going in. And yeah, I, I talk and I, loud. And I, and I, and I, and I, you know, I've told Freddie, I said, you know, part of what this is, is that we are really checking in, right? Because mm -hmm. this is a space for accountability and a space for perspective, like, because we sometimes we just need to be checked. And then sometimes we need to be assured and sometimes we just need to be held accountable because it's not just like, you know, it's just, it's not just like, oh, let's, what's this issue this week? No, we're checking in from, okay, this happened here. How are you doing from there? What steps have you put? And, you know, it's about growth. So we want to, um, you know, as team marriage, we want to help. Oh, yes, so they, you know, maybe if I lose a little weight, you know, <laughs> we want to yeah. help. Um, facilitate that and the way we do that is through communication because you know that was the, the topic of the retreat but as we go back into um, you know Ephesians it's Ephesians like 5 21 through 33 Ephesians 5 21 through 33 we just want to make sure that we are mindful of what is happening between the two of us as in the two of you or you and your spouse and how that changes over time. Um, you know, as you know, we've gone through a lot, especially in these last several um, years and being and doing the devotion has gotten us to a point where we're able to communicate, um, you know, what's happening, what's happened in the past, how, what do we think is gonna happen in the future and how do we navigate that? We don't have all the answers, but what we do is we try to make sure that we are at least having the conversation. And when, you know, even when we had the conversation on date night, you know, I told Freddie what my struggle was, um, what I still can continue to struggle with because, you know, we, you know, we told you and, you know, we had all sorts of reactions to, um, you know, what we shared about what the people say and Freddie saying that he never really felt like he fell in love with me and, you know, me trying to understand that. And, you know, um, it, it was just a lot. And so it was like, it's a lot for you guys because you're just hearing it, but you, you have to remember that this happened between the two of us, um, for four years ago. Right. And we're still hashing it out. Right. But it's, not as close it's not as close as like the shock of you guys hearing that right because you'd be like what the hell you know so um having to deal with that and the impact that it still has on our marriage right and it still has on our relationship and how that relates to like the scripture right when someone says hey i don't think i ever fell in love with you but i love you what what the hell does that mean um you're trying to figure out okay I'm processing what you're saying to me and understanding what you're saying to me because you are very intentional and deliberate about what you're saying to me. But then I'm still called to submit to you and you want me to respect you. How does that work? Because you just told me that you don't love me. And the first thing that has to happen between the two of us, according to the scriptures, that we got to submit to one another and you got to love me. And if you tell me you don't love me, why should I submit to you? Or if you treat me like you don't love me, why should I submit to you? So don't say or respect you. Don't say you need to respect me. Well, if you don't love me, I'm not going to respect you. You know, so you have to remember that this is not a um, one without the other. It has to be, it can't be mutually exclusive. No, they work together. They have they to work, work together. together. All three of the points where really it's submit to one another. Uh, submit submit to Christ submit to Christ submit to one another and then wives submit to your husband husband love your wife and then uh, wife respect your husband all of that has to work together and it was like you know a lot of times I mean I think 
one question and somebody re referred me to this scripture a while ago because I was like, when wives have a whole list of stuff that they're supposed to be doing, right? Proverbs 31, if we I'm mean, trying to live up to Proverbs 31, oh my goodness, it's exhausting, right? And so you try to figure out, well, where in the Bible does it tell the husbands what they're supposed to do? Because Proverbs 31, we have a whole guideline of what we're supposed to do as wives, right? But there's nothing like Proverbs 31 um, in the Bible for husbands. Yeah, Ephesians 5 comes close, but it talks but that's about what I'm both. saying. Yeah, but what I'm saying is that when I had that question, someone redirected me to Ephesians, Ephesians 5, 5, 21, right? 5 and 21. Right? You doing a lot. Today. I'm itching, man. I don't know why I'm itching. <laughs> I took a shower after I worked out. I don't know if it's the cotton. Anyway, and, uh, so someone I'm, referred me to Ephesians 5 um, and 21. And Ephesians 5 and 21 is very important because if you don't know what you're supposed to be doing as a husband, you need to refer to Ephesians 5 and 21. Absolutely. And it gives you very clear guidelines of what you're supposed to be doing. You are supposed to be submitting to God, number one. And once you submit to God, everything else should fall into place. You're supposed to submit to your wife, submit to one another, not just your wife submitting to you, yes, so but you you're to submit to one another, right? Yeah. So together, because it's team marriage, it's we are one, yeah. right? And so submit to one another. And even if you read the scriptures, you guys, are, you guys, you guys got to do this is that you have to be mindful that it talks about the body and how it functions. Like the eyes, you don't just have a body full of eyeballs, right? You need to have ears so that you can hear, eyes so you can see, and we all serve a different function. Mm -hmm. And so if you do that and understand that when you submit to one another, that it's for the good of the both of you. When you're together and you're working together, you all are a force that can get anything accomplished, you know. Then you start to get into the whole what, threefold uh, core. Three, four, yeah. Yeah. Um, and um, with Christ in the middle and then you and your spouse. And you do it together. It's not one or the other. You do it together. And you work through. It. You both know right now that there are strengths that you, each of you possess. And you should play to each other's strengths in the marriage mm -hmm. and allow the one that has that strength to utilize that strength to make the marriage better mm -hmm. and vice versa. And together, you know, you're an unstoppable force. Right. And you guys have to remember, too, I'm going to give you two other uh, stories in the Bible that can kind of help you as a point of reference to this. So also, um, we all know King David. King David was a man after God's own heart. Um, was he flawed? Absolutely. So before King David was King David, King David was, um, he's a servant of, uh, of, of uh, King Saul, right? Uh, Jonathan was his best friend and God had, Saul messed up and then God had said, okay, you messed up. I'm going to anoint another king. He anoints King, he anoints David as king, but David spent years, um, serving Saul and fighting for Saul and fight for fighting for the kingdom. And um, when Saul, God messed with Saul's mind, so then he went on attack against David. He's hunting him down. He's hunting him down like a dog. And David uh, became beloved. You know, Saul killed 1,000, David killed, killed 10,000. And so he was a, a king of the people because he had been all around the country and, you know, he had been fighting in the wars. And he had come to, when Saul was trying to track him down, he had come to a man named Nabal's house, right? Nabal, and his name means fool. You can read it in the Bible. And he sent word to Nabal to send, you know, David some food, him and the soldiers some food. And because David and them were in his land and they protected his land, they didn't take any of his food, you know, all this other stuff. And Nabal said, no. He's like, who are you? I don't know you. I don't know you. Nabal was like, no. And Nabal's wife um, is the first wife, Abigail. Maybe you do, okay. you know these stories a okay, lot okay, better okay, than okay, I okay. do. Because I'm trying to do the fast version. So she gets word that David has sent word. David has gotten upset because Nabal sent him away. Talking about he didn't know him. So David went out to kill him. His wife got word and she went out 
And she was like, okay, this is what I want you to do. I want you to take all this stuff and send it before me. And then I'm going to present myself to David and say, you know, my husband's a fool, blah, 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 blah. Right. So Nabal was a fool and he wasn't loving his wife. Right. Because he wasn't trying to protect her. And so he ended up um, dying of a heart attack. Um, and David ended up marrying his wife. Right. Then you have a situation where you, David, the same character, where David was bringing the Ark of the Covenant to um, back to the castle. And he had had a wife, um, Mikael, and she was so uh, what was the, uh, she was so displeased and so disgusted with David because when he was coming back to um, the the castle with the Ark of the Covenant, he danced out of his clothes, right? You know, mm -hmm. I will dance like David danced. Mm -hmm. So that whole situation where David's wife was disgusted, she was like, you up here dancing out of your clothes and all these young women, um, you know, are looking at you. And David was kind of mad with her because he was like, I'm praising, praising the, Lord, the Lord and you up here worried about my clothes, right? Because she was jealous. And even though she didn't die, she never bore children. That means that she never, she never was able to have children because he never slept with her again because she didn't respect what he was doing, right? As a husband, like his, as his wife, she didn't respect what he was doing. And therefore he took his love away from her, right? The attention. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with um, Abigail, I think it was Abigail, y'all correct me if I'm wrong. She, um, you know, she ended up being David's wife because her husband was a fool and he didn't love her. And therefore she had to respect you all the itching. But what I'm saying is that these are two classic examples with the same individual of the same perspective on the story, right? Because you have one where the husband is just a straight up fool, and then you have another one when the wife is a straight up fool. So don't be the fool in the story, right? Learn to love and respect your spouse mutually, because if you are submitting one to another, if you are submitting one to another, that means that I'm respecting Freddie and Freddie is also respecting me. All right. Mm -hmm. I know that was a long way around the story, but I know some of y'all like to have the male and the female perspective of the story. But that's an ideal story with the same character with two different sides to it. So make sure that as you talk to your spouse, you make sure you want to try to understand your spouse and you want to support your spouse because you want the best for them because the best for them means the best, best for, for the you. both of you. Best for both of you. Absolutely. Right. I was just going to say the best for you. Yeah, the yeah. best for you. Yeah. And so, <clears throat> because there's no way that if we are in this, you know, we're the we're the good fruit. There's no <clears throat> way, like a good tree or a good vine doesn't bear bad fruit. And a bad vine doesn't bear good fruit. So if you guys are together and you're submitting unto God, God is going to bless you and you're going to get good fruit. And just think about it like this. I know that I, I'm not a perfect husband and I've had some and challenges. And I had a perfect wife. Right. And there have been some things that I've done that were intentional uh, that caused damage to our marriage. And I reflect on the fact that what if you had been more submissive? What if you had been more uh, like Christ? And what if that had a pour, you would have poured into your wife? Imagine how God would have been blessing you um, through all of what you were doing because you reap for yourself. And imagine what he would have done already. He may be doing it now, but there's a delay. And imagine what he would have done already if you were more focused and more obedient. Think about the blessings that you are missing out on because of the choices that you make in your relationship. And one of the things that I think I think about a lot more now is I don't do it for God's blessing. I do it because I want to do um, things that are pleasing in God's eyes. 
and I'm doing it because that is the right thing to do. And as a result of that, I'm faithful over a few things. And then he's going to eventually make us rule over many. There are going to be many blessings and many opportunities because of our faithfulness to do things the right way. And you see it pretty quickly when you start to turn your life around and do things the way that God wants you to do them. You see the benefit in that. And there may be things that are broken and they have to be healed. But even in that process, there are blessings that are coming because of the obedience um, that you give to God. And you allow him to have his way and his will be done in your life. And when you do that, it makes such a difference. And it just puts your mind at ease. When you work together, when you allow each other to prosper in whatever their gifting is. What if I, you know, even in spite of all the things that happen in our relationship, I never stifle Tasha's uh, desire to write and to, you know, do all of the publishing things. And imagine if I had taken on that approach. Or imagine if she was like, no, we're not going to move because... Um, you know, you got this job, but that's not the thing. You know, she has been faithful in that. I have been faithful in the things. Her. I want to take photography class and, you know, go and buy all this equipment. But look what God has done. You know, the photography has paid for the classes. The photography has paid for the equipment. There are blessings in all these things when we are supportive of one another. Um, and I'm, I think about all the things that I didn't do right. If I only imagine if I'd have gotten that right, only imagine if we had been more obedient in this area, what would happen? And one of the reasons why we do this is we are being obedient. We know God has called us to do this. Uh, we know that we want to be a blessing to others. And whether it's one or eight that participate in, in, the, in the grand scheme of things, we just know what we've been called to do. And we're going to do what he said do. And when we hear him say, do something different, we will. But until that time, this is what we're going to do. We don't know where this is going to go. We don't know who it's going to impact or how it's going to impact somebody. But we know that God wants us to do this and we're going to just keep doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. And then kind of just to sum that all up is that, you know, we, we talked to you about how we were um, um, in the gym work because, you know, we work it out together and, you know, Freddie got the music going. And, you know, sometimes... Breathing all hard. He breathing. Tasha all quiet. I'm like, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> I'm big, y'all. These <laughs> exercises be killing me. <laughs> he he breathes hard. Um, and I think to myself, am I not doing something right sometimes? Because, you know, we're doing a little <laughs> shoulder things. And he like, huh, huh, huh. and I'm like, just breathe. I'm counting so that I can stay focused and get through the thing. I'm over there hurting. And I'm like, okay. And, but, you know, he has the music playing. And I, I'm not a music person. Like, I don't just put on music. Like, if I'm listening to music, I really like the person. Um, and so we're actually listening to Bruno Mars uh, in the in the uh, thing. I don't even know if you the, listen no, to the song. Man, so he attention. too busy. He too busy breathing hard. But <sighs> because I'm, you know, I'm not breathing so hard. I can hear the words of the song, and it's a good distraction. And he has the song. If I would have bought you flowers, you know that song, uh, and held your hand. You know he's saying all this stuff, right? Um, when he was this woman's man if he because he knew she liked these things right or if you want to flip it she knew he liked these things but he just didn't do it or she right just didn't or do she it. just didn't do it you knew that they liked this 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 thing and you knew that they wanted this thing and you knew that they needed this thing and you just chose not to do it and then he's talking about the song but it's from the perspective of he's not her man anymore and now she has a man that does all of these things and he wish he would have did it while he had her, right? So remember, you can't, you can start today, right? You can't, you could try to fix the past and you could try to do these things, but you can start today. And every day we make a choice, right? Every day you make a choice to get up and you love your spouse. Every day you choose to do 
something nice that's going to edify them and glorify God every day. Now, if you off your game and you know that you're not doing kind things or things to make your spouse feel special, then you need to step up your game. Don't do it. I don't not do it out of spite, right? Because there's a don't lot of stuff I don't can, not do it. Yeah, because there's a lot of stuff I could not do, but I have to tell myself to do them because I would be not doing them out of spite, and then that meant that I really wasn't trying. And so, like I give the advice to myself that I give to everyone else, have you done everything that you could possibly do to make your marriage better? And if you can't say that, then you still have some work to do. But if you know you've put the work in and your spouse is still not doing what they're supposed to do, don't worry about that because God going to handle that. He will. He will. Especially when you're praying and being faithful and doing what God has asked you to do. Mm-hmm. I think that impacts everything. And he turns things around because of your faithfulness. Right. I'm sure it's not Tasha could tell you a story about that too, but what? We don't have time for that this I evening. I didn't have no story about that. That's your, your No, thing. no, you know, there's always a story, a story from the Bible. Like, Wanna hear about it? Here's a story from the Bible <laughs> where somebody was being faithful over something. Oh yes. Oh and, yes. And it oh benefited others. Oh, oh yeah, Job. Come on think down. About it. Job, Joseph. Joseph. Oh, yeah. He was faithful over that vision that God gave him. I mean, yeah, look at how he blesses his family. Yeah, faith, faithfulness is, you know, faith without works is dead, though. Yeah. And that's the that's the whole point. Yeah, faith without work. works is dead. Don't, don't just say I have faith, but then you don't operate in the faith. And words without actions are dead as well. So don't just say I love you. Show, show me that you love me. Don't mm-hmm. say that I care. Show me that you care. Don't say that you support me. Show me that you support me. Don't don't just make it about lip action. There are several things that you say that you've done, you're going to do. And if you haven't done it, trust and believe. For us, I remember everything that you say you were going to do. And it's just because I can see you doing everything else you want to do. So don't tell me you want to do something, but it ain't you ain't have time to do it. Because everything that you want to do gets done. All right. On that note. I think you should close out in prayer. What was that? That was the pop lip popping. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Dear Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you and we praise you just for this opportunity and this platform to talk to married couples, Father God, and just allow us to be used by you for others to get closer to you and to hear and understand your word, Father God, and study to show themselves approved, Father God, to go to these places in the Bible that we're talking about so that they know what what is being said and they can validate it for themselves, Lord God. We trust in you, Lord God, that you are a healer, that you are a deliverer, Father God, and that you can do anything but fail, Father God. Father God, this is your covenant. This is the first institution that you established, Lord God, and we know that nothing can separate us from your love, Father God, and nothing can can um, come between our marriage, Father God, if you won't allow it, Lord God. We praise you and we thank you and we ask that you bless each and every family that's represented in this circle, Lord God. We ask that you just keep them, Lord God, and lift them up, Father God, and use them as you see fit. We praise you and we thank you. We ask that you forgive us of our sins and forgive those who have sinned against us and bless us, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Mm -mm. Mm-mm. 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 Mm-mm.